you know, when I talk about us being better in games, what I really mean is that we're unlocking a natural human ability, the ability to be optimistic, curious, ambitious, cooperative, resilient in the face of failure, less likely to give up when we're struggling, more likely to learn from our mistakes, and most of all, able to picture that epic win, that incredibly positive outcome that keeps us motivated. That's, that's what we can feel so easily in game worlds. And then in real school and real work and at the doctor's office and in our neighborhoods where our neighbors aren't even nice to us, we feel more like this. We feel like we're not good at life. We don't have the collaborators we need. We don't have the goals that would really charge us up. So that brought me to my first fix in the book, right? So I said the book is structured around 14 fixes, 14 ways that we could take how games make us better and use it to change the real world. So the first fix I'm calling unnecessary obstacles. Compared to games, reality is too easy. I know that sounds very strange, but it's true. We play games because reality is not challenging us enough in the right ways. Games challenge us with voluntary obstacles that help us put our strengths to better use. Now there's something just in its own way incredibly positive about how we're using games to challenge us and put our strengths to better use, right? I'm not saying that we can't just play video games in the way we're playing them now. In fact, the book is full of scientific research that shows that if you are confident in a game, that you take that confidence with you for up to 24 hours, you're more likely to do better on a test at school, more likely to negotiate better at the workplace, you're even more likely to be confident flirting with strangers at a bar. So we can take these feelings that we're having in games, these feelings that we've been powered up to do whatever it is we want to do, and we can take that to the real world, right? Studies have shown that the social relationships we build in games translate to the real world. That if we help someone in an online game, we're more likely to say yes if they ask us for help in real life. So there are slippery boundaries that we're already starting to see. So there's some positive benefit to just tackling unnecessary obstacles that put our strengths to better use. But it goes further than that. Because what I've seen with gamers is that if we spend a lot of time putting our strengths to better use. And for the average young person in North America, they spend 10,000 hours playing computer and video games by the time they're 21, which is 24 hours less than they spend in the classroom if they have perfect attendance for all of middle school and high school. So they are spending a lot of time putting their strengths to use in these games. And what we're seeing is that they're developing these four gamer powers. And these are powers that I think you will agree with me are the essential skills and abilities we need for the next century to tackle planetary scale problems. So the first is urgent optimism. Urgent optimism is the feeling that there is some important mission that needs to be tackled right away and that I am the person with the exact right combination of skills and abilities to do the job. So I feel personally called upon to rise to the heroic occasion. This is something we feel all the time in games. And it helps us develop our radar. So we walk around a game world. There's an economist, Edward Castronova, who says that there's no unemployment in World of Warcraft. When you walk around that world, everywhere you turn, there's somebody waiting to give you a world-saving quest, right? So walking around with a sense of urgent optimism, somewhere there is a job for me and it's gonna change the world. I just have to find it. Um, is an incredibly important power that if we brought to the real world could help connect people with world-changing work that they were actually qualified and prepared to do.